Welcome to Kill Team Casuals, a podcast all about Kill Team filmed in three different time zones by three different gents. Hey friends, Ben here, the only one on the podcast without a cool accent. Uh, Just dropping by to say thanks a ton for listening or watching however you enjoy the podcast. It really does mean a lot to us. And uh, if you are a faithful listener or unfaithful listener, we don't judge, and you're thinking, man, I just can't get enough of these three rascally boys and their casual kill team talk. What else can I do to support? What else? Where else can I find these guys? Well, friend, I would point you to the Kill Team Casuals Patreon page. For just a few bucks a month, whatever you wouldn't miss falling out of your pocket, uh, you can get access to the full long-form video podcast, as well as stay up to know, in the know, or all around the know, all up inside the know, if you will, uh, on what's going on, all these Patreon extracurricular activities, this fun stuff. So, uh, and if you want to be a real baller, you could even be a guest on Legions of Rust, the world-famous game show at the very tippy-top tier. And if you want to be the coolest nerd at your local game store, you can check out some sweet, sweet Casual Wargamers merch. That's short for merchandise, if you didn't know, at our uh, Teespring shop. Let's get a little too silly. Casualwargamers.creator-teespring.com. And as always, we go live most Mondays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Twitch. Thanks so much. I will shut up. Back to the lovely show. Um, We're doing our first uh, team faction focus between the three oh, yeah. great minds um, that are on other podcasts aren't here, but us three. Where this is where we all minds? get joint, <laughs> joint nosebleeds all happen like at the same time. Great minds and like no, like a fly <laughs> comes into the ear and then comes out the mouth. Yeah, out the other ear. Yeah. <laughs> Let's start for the for the layman's, i.e., the me's in the room. Um, the, the how the team is constructed. So basically. There's, mm. you've got to two different leader choices to choose from. You've got the chosen or the aspiring champion. And I guess, Russ, you've got mm. a book there. We follow along, mate. Uh, <laughs> it's good to see you read the rules for once. <laughs> and then after they're picking a leader, there's five legionary operatives you've got to choose and you can choose from a warrior, a gunner, heavy gunner, icon bearer, anointed butcher, balefire acolyte, and, of course, the shrive talon. So a few specialists. Mm. I can already shrivey, tell. Shrivey. I think we need to get mm. straight into talking about the leader operatives. I think that's where we're going to have to start. Yes. For leaders, it the biggest decision factor is what mission you are playing. Are there mission actions? But I, I'm a fan of the champ. I oh. almost always run champ. How about how about you, Russ? Yeah. I sp- so when I first started, I ran the chosen because I saw that demon blade at four seven lethal five two plus, and I was all about that Um, and then but yeah i but the aspiring champ is just for me just obviously better and i don't know why i didn't realize it until more recently um so i used to run the chosen a lot and then i it just clicked as soon as you kill someone you get a free action um you've got a plasma gun which the other guy has but you're hitting better and the sword still hits the same it's just slightly less damage it's just he's just infinitely better i don't know why i was so I don't know what the rules for the chosen was. He had the demonic aura, but yep. I never. Oh, soul feast. He had soul yeah. feast, so you could you could heal wounds if you hit with a crit. I think that's what I liked. I was like, ooh, that's good. But no, it's 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 the aspiring champ all the way. He's he's your S tier, and the other dudes your A tier. I guess A and yeah. B tier. It's, yeah, and for yeah, the he, differences differences between the two, I suppose we should we yeah. should bring up. But the, but the main difference is with the champ, you can either take power weapon. He actually can take a bunch of weapons, but the only one that you will you'll there's two that you'll take. One is the power weapon, uh, and yeah. the other is the power fist. And I think power fist is the best all around pick. But you there are times to to run all of them. And then when you, you get a kill, power like, fist. Like, oh yeah, baby, yeah. power fist oh, is wow. the default pick. Yeah, power power fist is the default. Fault pick, in my opinion. One you shot, go power Godsman. weapon most of the time. Brutal. I go power weapon just to to guarantee you're going to get those two hits. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the, the more the all hits. Yeah. I guess I've yeah. I've never played him with the power fist, but that would Wheels be. Oh, right. I just don't like hitting on threes. I guess it's still yeah. threes. You get more yeah, than fifty percent. Five, five attacks on threes, and the special weapon for this guy is that, or special rule, mind you. Uh, sorry, is that yeah. once per turning point, if you get a kill in the activation, you get a free action during that activation. So, an yeah. example: you charge, you punch, you shoot, 
and then you tap a point if you get that yeah. first kill. So that's it turns a, him into yeah. an absolute monster. Or let's say you got the double fight up, which will get to ploys, I suppose. But yeah. you charge in, you fight, you kill, and you fight someone else, and then you tap the point. Oh, my God. It's It will win you games. Like, that ability has won me games. It will win yeah. you games if you do it. Um, it's so it's, good. It's It's a real, yeah, that is the... That is his big thing in the eyes of the gods, and that is such a strong rule. Yeah, you should always take the aspiring champion, I think. I think that's what makes it powerful too, is it's it's an elite team. So anything that's meaning that your operatives can do mm. even more. They're already three APL, but as you said, and that was again in our game, Russ. I was like, Ben, where please head over to Casual War Gamers, check it out. But um, <laughs> the ability to do that, like maximize those maneuvers and including s- simple things like Move, like charge, kill, and then shoot. Like that's yeah. what turns, um, I guess, makes up that difference of those operative activations is maximizing the the th- their three or four APL. So I still think I love, I think I was a bit like you, Russ, the chosen data sheet when I looked at it. I saw Demon yeah. Blade, um, you know, I, I was like, cool. that looks sick. The ability to heal. So you do, it's harder to change your mind off the, just thinking about how you're killing things um, versus yeah. playing the mission. And- yeah, how that one works is in combat, if you strike with a crit, you can something like that. I think that's what it is. You strike yep, with a crit, two you wounds. can heal yeah. two wounds, which looks exciting. Yeah. But it yeah. is just not worth what the champ gives you. That's I do think there are use cases like maybe into something like Geller Pox or something where you can you're getting those lethal five, like a bunch of like yeah. I think there are use cases when you just need a beat stick um, that you can take him. But I think. 90% of the time, you'll probably run ch- uh, the champ, in our opinion. Yeah. Agreement. It's and definitely the plasma pistol. Um, there was a question from the chat. 100%. Drone 4321 yeah. has ever asked not running plasma and running with bolt to shoot twice against weaker enemies, so I guess horde teams. Painted bolt. My friend, uh, never do it. You get a reroll. I was going to say. But you never do it. The only way it's worth it is yeah. if you give him, we'll, we'll get to it, the tainted rounds, but yeah. then you're wasting that equipment yes. on him. That should go on somebody yeah. else. Always run the plasma. Double shooting is, I, so here's what my, some of my philosophy on legionaries, we'll get there, philosophy, philosophy, is that there are so many traps in this team that look cool, yes. like the, the Chosen. You think, oh, man, it looks so cool, but if you do that, mm. you're missing out on the real sauce. So I think seven wound teams, you go fist. I think ten wound teams, you go fist. Yeah. Uh, I think, like, like I you said, I think for eight. I don't know about ten wound teams. Ooh, it's just two regular Ooh. hits. It's brutal. So it's it is brutal. What are they going to do? It's a powerful thing. It's brutal, which... It yeah, is it, brutal. Mm. But if you if you get five, if you're charging first and you get five attacks on two up, you're going to get more or less four hits pretty much guaranteed, maybe one crit. So it's maybe two crit. I don't know. It just feels like you're either going to do sit at 12 or 10 damage regardless. Whereas if you absolutely whiff hard on a power fist, and especially if you're injured at that point and you haven't taken implacable, let's say you're not Nurgle, you might be hitting on but fours. But if you're doing whereas it the right way, you will have always, taken Nurgle. <laughs> and you will have run implacable, so he won't be injured. But if you don't, I think universally, I think universally a power sword is probably on average your better option but i do think a power fist in certain scenarios is mm, i don't know i think that's pretty good sometimes it's a bit tasty with a seven and eight damage but i'm gonna have to say i'm gonna have to say ben on the roster we're gonna have to have two one with power fist and one with power weapon because i do think it's a good one you gotta have you got to you gotta have both so the real answer here is plasma pistol on both yeah yeah Yeah. plasma pistol and and match up dependent if you're going the fist Mm. or the sword i think so so. unless We're going rule of cool, in which case it's also always power fist. Yes. And, and and think about this, guys. If you're going into what is the what is the meta flooded flooded with at all times? Effing intercessors. How many wounds <laughs> oh, do intercessors yeah. have? 14. 14? What is, is seven, it 14? What is, yeah. what is seven plus right, seven yeah. equal? 14. Is it 14? What, yeah, what is that equal? Down. A dead intercessor. Dead. <laughs> Very that's nice. Yeah, that's it. nice. Against, but like again, it's all use cases. Because against, are you are you yeah. going into the mirror? Well, you probably want the power weapon because two lethal five crits is boom equals a dead legionary yeah. or a twelve wound model. So you just got to do the math in your head. And so yeah. I think bit, I think seven, seven, ten, and fourteen. You go fist. I think eight, twelve, whatever. You go power weapon. That's my opinion. But you you go back and forth on the on the ten wound. I think yeah. either either Run way on. works. Talking about, I guess, the first of the playing operatives, I think we all know the answer here, but it's the lowly legionary warrior. Is this guy ever seeing any play? 
You never take never. him. You never, never take him. Move on. Never. Uh, it's the legionary gunner. So this is another ooh. Operative. pretty familiar so, across ooh. most teams have gunners. Yeah. Um, you but, always yeah. take him. Mm-hmm. You always take a gunner. But, but this is I know me and you, me and you. I I've moved. I've started taking this a lot more because mm, it's such yeah. a fun move. Taking the melter is oh, so fun and but it is the fun choice i feel like the plasma is probably the better choice it's because you can overall. shoot at something yeah you can shoot yeah. at something turn one but there's something about bringing a melter to kill yeah. team that is just so powerful full mortal wounds yeah i mean that and, is rough and on, in, on into the dark i think you auto take the melter it's it, again. If we only have one spot on this team, we are. We have to go the plasma. Tight. We've got yeah. one, one yeah. spot here. It's, it's, the roster's it's tight. the best all around choice. And we'll get to equipment. But if you give him a malefic blade, so now he's yeah. got five attacks, three five. I always give he's him. A, yes. Oh, he's a little beast running around. Nobody expects yeah. you to charge with the plasma gunner because now you're shooting on threes, three five, oh, three five. Rough. Yeah, you're yeah. shooting somebody dead. You're charging somebody, fighting him with five attacks. You're ruining people's life. It's amazing. It's so <laughs> yeah. good. But I do like melter. That if you want to have fun, you take the melter. Yes. I think yeah. if you're running legionaries and you've not run a melter yet, give mm. it a try. Because again, into the dark, definitely take the melter. But if you've not tried it before, there's something just magical about the legionary because yeah. you've got a move dash to get within that range, and anything you shoot is most likely dead. Yeah. yeah. And there's tricks you can do. We'll talk about the like cool. the tricks you can Baby. use. But there is oh. Maybe there's tricks, but you you should try a melter because it is yeah. it is fun. Yeah. So that's the other bit of the melter. No hot. Yeah. You get the AP two, yeah. and you just get it. No you hot. don't need to worry so um, about yeah. blowing Plus, your own. If you've taken the leader that we've suggested, then you'll already have plasma in your list anyway. And yeah. if you're playing it in the way that elites tend to be played, you've got to move forward because you don't have enough mm-hmm. operatives to stay back. You've got yeah. to meet your obje- your opponent on the objective points anyway. So you're going to be within pistol range if, if you're playing for those objectives anyway. So I think, oh, yeah. you know what? You've already got the plasma in there. I take yeah. try a melter. See how it makes you feel. You'll feel yeah. good. That's our that's our gunner locked in. It's the plasma, but the spicy choice of the, to to tantalize your own Ooh, taste yes. buds. Give the melter a try. Treat yourself. Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Next operative up, it's the heavy gunner. Um, an Ooh. interesting one. A very Ooh. interesting um model because yeah. there's a lot of um versatility in this, but some big drawbacks. So much controversy. Yes. I think this yeah. is probably one of the, the the tough ones on the list to say, maybe you're on the bench, mate. You're good. Yeah. But are you good? I enough? was, I think, you swap him sometimes. Yeah. If the board is heavy, maybe mm. he stays at home. Uh, but I, I think in the all comers list, what, what do you guys think? I think you got to take him. In the all comers, one list, one list to rule them all. I think you got to take the heavy gunner. Not having, in a small team, not having the ability to have board control is a is a big negative. There's lots of really good close combat or operatives that need to get up close, but having someone that can dominate the backfield with either a versatile missile launcher or a Reaper chain cannon is, is a pretty handy thing to have, especially on the open board. Yeah. So I yeah. I love, and again, I, I if, if I'm, depending on the, this is the character that gets, the operative, I should say, that gets dropped the most. If yeah. I'm, depending on my match, if I'm like mm-hmm. doing a roster, I, I will change this guy out the most out of all of them. Um, but I do love the versatility of the missile launcher. Mm. I like it because if you're going into elites, that means you have two frags, uh, sorry, two blasts, essentially frags. You've got two blasts and you have them on, on opposite sides. So it's hard for them to hide a turn one blasting from you've got to worry about a move, a dash and a blast from the bale fire. And you've got to worry about a move and a, a blast frag from the the missile launcher, I don't tend to run anything other if I'm running him. And I know that's maybe oh a bit weird. God, yeah, I know town. you're going to say that's heavy bolter. Town. I've seen heavy bolter do some work. I'm not a heavy just, bolter man. I'm not a heavy don't, bolter man. Are you a reaper auto a chain cannon? Do the math, Russ. Do the math. It is the <laughs> best single on threes. threes. It's the best re-rolling ones, three, five damage. Re-rolling yeah. ones, think about that. It is the best, if you math it out, it's the best single target damage heavy weapon we have access to. Yeah. 
Yeah, which is okay, crazy because it doesn't no, look at look at the stats. Melter, you read it. please, but I get you, I get you. Yeah, okay. Heavy weapons, heavy weapons. Yes, heavy sorry. weapons. No, that's, sit that's down. fair. I will sit down. Yeah, I like the double blast that makes people have to be like, "Ooh, where do I deploy?" Because if I can make you make a mistake in deployment or make you think about a frag in deployment, maybe you'll do something wrong. And I have to rely yeah. on that. You know what I mean? You have to you have to mess up so I can do well. So I like that, but I do agree <laughs> that uh, that arguably. It is pumping out the most action. Three five. It's pumping out yeah. more damage than a than a frag, uh, than uh, a frag, and it's not doing as much damage as a crack, which is five seven, obviously. But mm. but I just I, mean, I like out, a crack. Yeah. On average, it, it does it does more damage than as well. Crack. Oh, now yeah, let's not that. hate. <laughs> let's not hate on fusillade, but six attacks. Good into blooded. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can split them out. I mean, if you get three crits and you've got enough three. I mean. Boom, that's three dead. I mean, imagine. Yeah. I'm, it's basically blast. I get it. Yeah. yeah. No, I I think I think I would try that. But personally, just because I would I, I like the versatility of a crack against a heavy target and a frag against um yeah. um, like elite not elites like a horde team is how I tend to run it. But I I will I will admit that I don't think I I've experimented enough with the heavy okay. gunners. So I, yeah. I think so- I'm I'm open to trying. Ooh, you're Jesus. open to He's experimenting loud. with. He's yeah. So the when you map it out, curious. yeah, I am. The I am four, the four attacks. <laughs> so, so the problem with now, and I, missile launcher was my first love. I will say this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I go in my opinion. I go Reaper chain cannon, missile launcher, heavy bolter. Heavy bolter is only worth it if you're double shooting. If you're double shooting, you're getting blasted off the table in most yeah. situations. If you're playing against a competent opponent. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, like the four attacks with the crack, you are just going to whiff. Is my problem with that. You're just going to whiff with six attacks, hitting on threes, rerolling ones. It's so incredibly reliable. It's consistent. And I'm so yeah. passionate about this stupid <laughs> little thing. Yeah. So so my my personal pick is uh, is is chain cannon. Your personal yeah. pick is missile launcher. Um, they're they're both great. Like cults, man, a missile launcher into cults. If you're going into a body dense team, mm. the missile launcher oh, is just going to shred them apart. So so we go okay. on Reaper chain cannon as, as the default pick. Here is the best yeah. overall. Okay. I'm, yeah, I, I think I but think you can't go wrong. Yeah, if, if if you're yeah, if you wanted to one team to rule them all, as we said, I'm happy to concede a Reaper chain cannon in the fact that as a one target, like you could you could reliably take out like quite a large target. Maybe not a um, uh, Hulk, but maybe uh, yeah. Depending if you rolled well and they rolled badly, you could take out a Hulk. Yeah. So it just I'll take and it. also a, a little secret: if you bail fire buff it, give it lethal five. Oh baby, five Ooh. six. Oh, it's so good. We're spending too much time. This is my fault. Mm. I take responsibility. No for taking cover. Too much time Turn one. On this bad no guy. cover. The pass save. You've got a five up save. They're behind cover. You take away the cover. Give them five up. Boom. Yeah. Okay. Well, nice. look, the team's filling up quick, and we've still got a few operatives to go. Next up, we've got the anointed, our old uh, secret oh, demon gosh. boy. You, you yeah. take him every single time. <laughs> every and game. Thank, and you thank the chaos gods that they granted you the anointed. That's it's, easy. This guy is so good. The stats on him, he's yeah. the standard 12 wounds, three up save situation. Yeah. Once he goes, he, he's got a demon claw that before you go demon mode is, is five attacks, hitting on threes, uh, four or five damage. And then once rending. you go demon mode, yeah, rending, thank you very much. Once you go demon mode, you get a five up feel no pain. You also yep. gain ceaseless. ceaseless. You yeah. also lethal gain five. lethal wow. five up. It's yeah. in freaking sanity. You and get to fight twice for free. Fight twice. It's yeah. just nutty, guys. Oh, you take him. If you don't take him every game, play a different team. Get out of my face. <laughs> what do you yeah, think? This is of- the reason you take <laughs> Chaos Legionaries. You take it because you want these operatives. Yeah. What do you think of the fact, though, obviously in an elite team, and this is devil's advocate, if you will. Yeah, that- no. I appreciate this. We need to have a little bit of it. <laughs> that he does then lose the ability, obviously, to do pick up or perform mission actions in an elite team. That's you don't a, does care. That, nah, okay, we don't care. <laughs> we don't care. He's there to run forward, and he's yeah. there to bait people out. He's yeah. there to cause chaos. He like for me, typically, he is the first to break their lines. Yep. And then because he can survive yeah. a punch, take the punch. So I, I think I say we don't even we don't even give a heck. That's what I say. And he's going full yeah. demon straight out of the gate. First activation. We're just no. powering up straight away. Or are you waiting? Depends. I'd send. Yeah. So if, mm. if you're playing capture, 
Yes. If you're playing secure or loot, no, because you want to race him forward and take a flank and then race him in. So turn, start turn two, I turn him and charge in. But I turn can, one, he's mm. in conceal, he races, he secures a, a spot, and then just waits. He lies in wait what? like a wolf. And then he charges out. That's my plan with him. Okay, yeah. interesting. How about you, yeah, think, Do you go full straight away? So I try, when I deploy, I try to have everybody take a point so the demon like have the points carried by other people so the demon guy so the anointed doesn't have to worry about it and so oh, wow, okay so ideally now there have been cases where oh man i made a mistake and i have to tap him with this or something mm-hmm. but I, I i move him up he's like probably the last activation and you i demon mode him move him up and you give him the trophy so mm-hmm. minus one attack the trophies. three inch yeah, behind. Yeah. So he's just really hard to kill. So if you lose initiative, somebody walks up, tries to blap you. You can't blap me. I'm the anointed. I'm demon mode. I have a five up feel no pain and minus one attack. So, yeah, but both ways again, like if you are, I have made mistakes. <laughs> even me, even <laughs> me, guys, I accomplished player Ben has made mistakes. Even the uh, map And like to, to where it's like, oh, crap. Yeah, you have to you have to leave him turn one uh, as regular guy. So. Yeah, just, yeah. just situational. Just just depends. He's versatile, yeah, as depend. you said. There's there's a number of ways yeah to use him as the as Russ sort of said the move up and and surprise the lurking threat that the players worry about. Or as Ben said, you just kick in the front door and and shove him down their throat. I'm going to say Order drone four three two one has a good point because he can get locked in rooms, which is kind of stupid. That's very oh, true. He can't wow. do mission actually. He's like, you take him unless you're on Into the Dark and there's a room where enemies can, can just close the door and lock you in. <laughs> it is stupid. It is stupid. I think I think it should be uh, plus one a, um, AP to mission actions as a yeah. demon. So he could move and open a door still or move and bop, but not oh, move dash. And, like, I think they should just mm. do that because it is stupid that he can't open a door. They should just make it... I think if, if they were writing the rules for them now he would get what all of those kind of similar operatives mm. get, which is minus plus one AP to do a mission action. Mission, yeah. Like the mutants and the torments in um, yeah. the Colts team. Like, I think that's what, if you were re- write, writing it now, that's what he would get. But because it was written back in the day and he was maybe the first of the mission action, I don't know what they would call it, a mission action adverse <laughs> operative, uh, he just got none. You can't do anyone. Got none. Yeah. Kind of stupid. Kind of yeah. stupid. Kind of stupid. Yeah. Bizarrely, so. demons can do mission actions. Go figure, oh, that's you true. So a full demon can do it, but a dude with a little bit of demon can't? I don't <laughs> think so. That's stupid. <laughs> Oh, yeah. right. Russ, is, Russ, is, Russ is keeping track over here, man. He's keeping track. Taking notes. I'm Taking just saying, <laughs> if a, if a bloodletter can, uh, can secure an objective, <laughs> how can an anointed not? Yeah. <laughs> Think about oh, it. Good point. God damn, Making me think a over mutant, here. a mutant can do it. Just takes him a little bit extra time. A shambling gets, mutant. That's all he's doing, but he can do it. I, I get it. A slug can't do it. Yeah. From the gallop box. A fly can't do it. Are we saying yeah. the anointed's as smart as a slug? That's That'd what we're stupider. saying. At he's least the stupider. Same level, at he's least. stupider than a slug. <laughs> so, right. so that is slot number four filled that by is, the anointed. That's four. Four. Um, the legionary yeah. butcher. Uh, the much maligned at mm. times. Um, we found the first bummer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if, if you're playing into the dark. It's not that much of a bummer. Like oh, that's a man. that's. I I've started running him more, and admittedly, he doesn't do much because he draws a lot of attention. Yes. As someone, if he hits a lot, if he hits your lines. He's going to be hitting your lines hard. Um, sure. I mean, with that, with that reap. I mean, I mean, he, 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 oh, I mean, it's not great. Reap's not a great. Reap it's no is splash. less useful than fusillade. Whoa, whoa, yeah, whoa! Yeah, so if whoa. yeah, <laughs> reap is. Can't reap, take back. <laughs> you know what the problem is? He's built on this reap rule, and it's like it is. It is situational. There's like if he if if he just had lethal five, that would be better yeah. than reap. Because that will happen every time you roll. Whereas a reap is he, he, rolling a crit doesn't mean it goes off because you've got to have people within X yeah. range. And it's sort of mm. like, I get that they want you to be charging into a horde with him. And that's thematic as hell, him yes. going in and. But yeah. it's just like, if you're not against a horde team, do you just not take him? 
And I guess that's the answer. Like you just don't yeah, take don't. it. Let's talk about why he's why he is one of the bummer picks most of the time okay. because he's got a he, yeah. he's the coolest looking model, isn't he? Uh-huh. He's got this Fight huge off. double-handed yeah. chain axe. He's got a big old angry grin on his face. And what does that big old angry chain axe give him? Four attacks. What does he hit on? Four. Oh, that is that insane. That's the worst. Yeah, yeah. that is. You know, worst. that's the. Worst. I mean, he gets ceaseless if you've been charged, and he gets relentless if you charge. Mm. So it's not terrible, but. Hitting on fours, yeah. he has whiffed so yeah. many times. It's you're getting two hits, two yeah. hits maybe. And and you've got you've got six operatives, right? The six, yeah. seventy sixes, and you need them all <laughs> to be expert. Yeah. This is who you put in charge of maths. That's the guy. <laughs> you, they all need to be reliable, right? Fours yeah, on fours, yeah. even with relentless. It's just if it was five on fours, hey, maybe this guy sees some action now. But I'd agree. I, I agree. I agree with you, Russ, that if you're going into vet guard or pathfinders or something, I think, oh, man, maybe Ooh. now we can talk about pulling him out. Yeah. And I will give him this. If you are running corn and he's like a, a, a tech piece with corn, mm. he also becomes a little more desirable. But a few people we have six slots to that, fill that with corn. Yeah. He becomes yeah. uh, one thing. One thing yeah. that I in a little quick fix that I think could be very cool um, but maybe it might be OP. I don't know. But obviously, we know he's got the for the purpose of dash fallback norm of actions. His engagement range is treated as um, circle. Yes. What if mm. his engagement range was always circle? Oh, that would be sweet. Because that would be we could charge somebody two inches away. That's it. Yeah. So all of a sudden, his ability to tie up more than one operative and use things yeah. like his, I guess, all those extra Reap. abilities to fight twice. The all of a sudden, yeah. that becomes so much more dangerous and devastating for your opponent. But at the moment, you know, it's it's not too hard to stretch you guys out or be, like, as you said, you're aware of him in the team, so you kind of just do your best not to give him those opportunities. But in, I think it's Warcry. Yeah. You get models that are like that. They've got that extra bit mm. of, you know, they, they, yeah, they can engagement. strike further away. And how cool. And like, I like that, that that's the fix. That yeah, would be like so a, yeah. two inch. It would yeah. be so thematic. Yeah. And so, you just it, it works because he's the axe. swinging around. Yeah. yeah. Do, so, do you know what, my, himself? Yeah. My, my main issue with them when they first launched was on an open play. And again, Into the Dark, I, I would never consider him from open play unless the board was... Uh, because it, delivering him to combat was so difficult because mm. your opponent knew he was coming. So it would be like, well... I mean, and that's not bad, but as, as Ben said, it's an elite team. Everyone needs to pull their own weight. Yeah. And if he had a charge from Conceal, I'd be like, oh, that'd be great. It's not yeah. thematic at all because he's corn. He'd be like, Rah. it doesn't make sense for him to be like, shh, like that. So I get it. It doesn't make sense, but like some way to deliver him into combat and actually having an, a two inch engagement range, effectively giving him plus triangle to his movement. And yeah. then if you took him as Slanesh for some reason, that's an extra two in, like you put an extra triangle on that range for charging. That's really like that almost would fix, not fix him, but that's a, I really like that I as a fix. Really it's asking. not overtly. Yeah. It's not overtly OP to be like, that's always in his, his engagement range. Mm. Yeah. It's cool. Cause like you could park him on an objective and that two inch yeah. bubble means that people can't move onto it. Mm. And also yeah. people can't break his conceal if he's behind cover from that's, where they're at. Yeah. I was going to say that's good so, because they can't get yeah, within. You'd be like, that's my engagement yeah. range. In my opinion, aside from the warrior, he is the, the least used uh, operative on the team. Yeah. I think it's pretty safe to say. I think I said, I love the model. What do we think? I love the idea of him. Yeah. Um, but I said in terms of a guest, list, especially for an all comers list that we get on the table and do your best. Nah, he's on the bench, unfortunately. He's, he's out. All yeah. right. Another fan favorite for some. Uh, it's the legionary Shrive Talon. Oh, best God. operative in the game. Yeah. Best <laughs> operative in the goddamn game is the Shrive moving Talon. From, and take moving it away. from the bummer. Moving from the bummer oh. to r- rags to riches here. Shrive <laughs> Talon almost always comes along maybe he doesn't come along into cults but every other matchup you take him he's insane he's got all the stats you know and love he's got two knives now listen the knives do not look quite exciting and let's be honest they're maybe not it's five attacks hitting on threes Threes. three five damage lethal five this is this is off the top of my dome i think i'm right yeah correct me if you are spot on yeah no you're right i'm fact checking you after the maths now i'm a little bit worried (laughs) so i'm keeping an eye on some things but here's the real sauce because that's fine that damage is fine here's the real sauce 
uh, he has a couple of abilities uh, and yeah. uh, or, or one ability, I forget. But you move on to an objective. So and it costs two action points to do this. You drop, was it the Grizzly icon? Grizzly, grizzly Mark. Grizzly Mark, thank you. And from now on, even after that operative dies, that objective or mission action, i.e. door on into the dark, costs one extra action point to open or tap. So horde teams cannot move on and tap unless they buff themselves. Now get this. If, if, if you thought that was awesome, which it is, there's even more. Let's say someone charges you in combat. You have the f- you get to fight first. I forget what the rule is called. Vicious but you get reflexes. to fight first. Ooh, you be, yeah, so vicious good. reflexes. You go first, yeah. A scary guy charges you. Guess what? You are treated as the attacker. Oh, my good golly gosh. It's so good. Russ, this is your favorite guy. I'm doing all I the talking. It. No, man. I, lo- I mean, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick up where you left off with... Horrifying dismemberment because oh, this is oh God. Such there's, a more. Fun. there's more. There's more. Yeah, when you kill someone in combat, you basically pick an operative within Square and say you get minus one APL. And now that I mean, think how good it is when you get a comms unit that can buff a unit to plus one APL. I think how devastating it is where it's like bang. If you charged into two, you killed one, and you're like, hey, buddy, I've just charged into you. You're not falling back. Minus one APL. It's like, mm. oh, it gets, it's, it's so good. Indie. What do they do? They're going to pass. They're probably not going to out APL you. Otherwise, they could yep. disengage. So they're probably not bopping a point if you've charged on a point. And if they attack you, fool on them. You attack first. Oh, kill them. Oh, and you know baby. what? You bop someone else within square and say, now you're minus one APL. It's, just, it's the gift that keeps on giving. It's amazing. Vicious reflexes fight first. You're like, that's so good. But then it's that next level of looking at it. Then you go, oh, as you get better at the game and you start to understand how important those APL modifiers are, taking objectives yeah. and all that that all of a sudden moves up your, your mental tier rank of being so powerful. And as I said, Ben, I'm taking notes of that Grizzly Mark maneuver too of doing that night mm-hmm. with the door because that's huge Oof. too. That can be – that that is a game changer. Like, again, with an elite team yeah. being able to block away where, you know, that's a fear opponent, that's powerful, yeah. very powerful. If he's a Slanesh Shrive Talon, for one CP – Captivating something is the is the it's a tactical ploy. The Sl- Slaneshi Shrive ploy. Uh, excuse me. Uh, the, the sickening Sl- captivation. Thank you, sir. It's it's their tactical ploy. You you spend a CP and it does the sickening captivation thing again, where you subtract another APL from a different model. Yeah. So you charge mm. a group of guys, kill one, one instantly uh, minus one APL, and then you spin a spin CP, a the other one minus, I did it just the other day against Wormblade, and I locked up two operatives. It was like, well, you can't do anything. Guess what? They both fought me. I killed both of them. Oh. It was insane. The next turn, it was just mind numbing. It's so good. So Shrive Talon brings. Uh, he comes along almost all the time. That's our fifth slot. That's it. The yeah. Competition for the for the sixth one. My Five goodness. Slots, baby. You always take this guy. Um, the next one is the Icon Bearer. He's real good. <laughs> yes. Sometimes you will take him. I love to take him. You can either take him with a bolter. And buff him with equipment so his bolter does four or five damage. Mm, Pairs really yeah. nice with a heavy gunner with a heavy bolter. Mark of Zinch for those guys. Lethal five. Now your heavy bolters is lethal five P1. Tap, you know, and you're double tapping with both. It's good. Or as I like to run him, chain sword uh, with a crack grenade. He's a little beast as well. But he's great. You will take him sometimes. when the I take him sometimes when the board is too dense for a heavy gunner. I will take the icon bear because most importantly... We, we, we forgot to talk about this on the leader, but if you have a leader or an icon bearer on the board, you get a mm. free strategic ploy for the corresponding yeah. mark of yes. that model. So David he's also also acts. He also acts as a really great insurance policy, uh, and he is a little beast all on his own. But you would never take him over the last operative, which, of who course. Is the Balefire Acolyte. Russ touched on oh, the us in. early God. threat Ooh. range or, or the early threat of this yeah. guy. Um, so, another auto include, yeah. really, this guy, isn't he? 100%. Oh, this guy you is drop your... Him. You never yeah. drop him. He's always there. And he's your last model that you deploy as well. So yeah, you see yeah. the lay of the land and you're like, yes. okay, this is where the Balefire is going to do the most damage. Because he is the only real alpha strike you have as legionaries because you've got a move, dash, and a blast. Mm. So he's your he's your biggest threat if you're doing anything in deployment zones. 
um, for turn one, basically. You're probably not going to get an Alpha Strike off with uh, Balefire unless your opponent's misdeployed. But if they yeah. have you might get it basically so this is the last operative you deploy and you try and put them in it, it basically any mistake your opponent's made in setup you capitalize with the bail fire that's not the only reason he's awesome <laughs> but that can be a great just an absolute demoralizing and that's a horrible thing to say to demoralize your opponent because you want to have a fun game nah. but that is a great starting move yeah. to be like boom blast that's harsh. Um, yeah. Now, but, tell I us mean, about this yeah. blast attack because it's one of the mm. best in the game. Give us the profile. It's I so think good. Out of my head, but you read it out. I'm not the math man anymore. Let's. Do you want to test you? I've got it here. So it's fire oh, yeah. blast. It's a free okay. shoot action. Tell us yes. the uh, how many attacks, Ben. You get four attacks. You're hitting yeah. on threes. You're doing oh, yeah. three four damage with no Maybe. cover and splash oh. one. What? So and blast. Oh, oh yeah. Sorry, Don't forget blast. blast. Like, yeah, baby. the most important part of this party. Yeah. So splash yeah. means that every crit you roll against every target in that blast each yeah. takes a mortal wound for each six that you roll. It's Amazing. insanity. It will delete teams. It will win you games. Uh, and he also has a couple other psychic powers as well. One being life yep. siphon. It's yes. five attacks doing three, three damage. Yeah. Uh, it'll help you heal a comrade. You're never going to use it. If you have the option, you're going to no. fire blast somebody. Yeah. Uh, but he also has another. Sp what's the buff spell called? Malign, Malign influence. Oh, yeah. So good. Now, Great. this will, you, you pick a model in line of sight, right? Is that how it works? Uh, yes, uh, visible. visible. Yeah, yeah. Visible. just visible. Visible, yeah, just visible. And they get, give us give us the buffs. I know it's lethal five, no cover, all this crazy and stuff. Brutal. What do they get? Brutal. Brutal, yeah. Lethal five. Oh, is no that it? I get it? Brutal. Oh, That's man. It. You're very good, yeah. man. You're very yeah. good. So they're, they're <laughs> melee weapons and they're, yeah. I mean, you can't get brutal. And brutal is, a, I believe, a melee uh, keyword. Melee only, yeah. Um, but yeah. I, but like, what I love to do with them is you buff himself and you race into combat. If you're, mm, not if oh, you have to, gosh. but as a, but as a last minute, it. like, if they're sleeping on him in combat and you and they're like, you're not gonna charge in with your 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 bail fire, that's stupid. You buff yourself, charge in, you get a lethal five up, which means when you're doing your demonic energies crit, on a six oh. you do two mortal wounds. So on fives you do two mortal wounds, three, four damage, and I don't know, it just it's pretty good. So that's like three, six it's, damage. Think about a power fist with lethal five. Ooh. Seven you, damage, buff, you, yeah. you buff the champ yeah. so now he's got a power fist the lethal champ. five his plasma pistol has no cover he's he's even more of a tank oh you know i didn't even thought about that i always yeah. tend to buff yeah i tend to fire blast and then oh yeah that's nice actually yeah. that is yeah you want to prioritize yeah. fire blast but sometimes if you're playing yeah. a good opponent you may not have that target mm. so you just buff yeah. somebody else and then let them just rain terror yeah he's so good you always take him uh this makes up our sixth and final operative correct uh and so so that this is i think a great in my opinion the best take all comers list yeah there is. a take all comers list that's that's a solid list for them all yeah, I like that. And I guess what we probably need to look at now, we've got those six. So just just to rehash for those who are wanting to write this down madly at home, you've got the aspiring champ with the plasma and the power fist. You've got the gunner with the plasma gun. You've got the heavy gunner with the reaper chain cannon. We've got the anointed, the shrive talent, and the bale fire. But, of course, now the important thing, and I guess what makes the Chaos team so powerful, we need to start looking at the marks of Chaos um, or the Chaos blessings uh, that these entail for the operatives. We need to give them some marks. Ben, please. Yeah, I, I can take this real quick. Six marks of Nurgle, please, <laughs> to go. Thank you very much. Yeah. No, that's best default. Okay, let's settle this right now. Let's settle this right yeah. now. And so, so okay. the marks, let, let, let's start bottom tier. What are you almost never taking? Undivided. Undivided, yeah. Them. Undivided. Some people will tell you to run undivided marks on an icon bearer for yeah. a free shoot twice full or something. You can do that as you get more comfortable and figure out what you like. Uh, yeah. But you're, we're not, there's, there is I've zero undivided it. on this list. Yeah, you won't. Yeah. So yeah, basically, though, that. that's for those who don't know, you're within Pentagon, you can re-roll one of your attack dice. So up yeah. close and personal is, is the blessing there. But, yeah, as you said, even if you're making a real shooty list, it's probably still not the, the mark you're taking at all. Yeah. Maybe yeah. against Gellerpox, if you are fighting 
like a dense Gellerpox meta. The rerolls up close can be nice, but th- we're not we're not niching down to a specific nah. enemy. This we're talking oh, yeah. the best all comers. Uh, so all we're comers. not taking undivided. Uh, let's move on to. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm going to be a little biased here, so I don't want to be too biased. What, what, what's next on the list? Okay. I think Corn is I probably next on the, the list. Corn or okay. Zinch. I agree. I, I corn. Corn. Yeah. corn. So yes, Corn is corn. great because the rule, I forget what the rule is called. Someone, someone say Wrathful me. Onslaught. Wrathful Onslaught. Yeah. When, when, on the charge, I believe, is it on the charge? You, yes. get, you can t- treat a regular hit as being. Oh, no, each crit. time they're fighting combat, yeah. apologies. Oh, look Each time fighting combat oh, okay, in the resolve hit step of the that combat, if you do not retain any critical hits, you strike with one normal hit as if it were a critical hit. So it saves you from whiffing on the crit department. Yeah. Uh, and he- here's the reason why you take corn. You take corn for uh, the, the, the three inch extra charge slingshot uh, buff to your whole team, mm. it, which oh, is yes, called the someone, someone unending me. bloodshed. Unending yes. bloodshed. Uh, or is that the one or is it the, diff- the other one? Oh, no. Sorry, no, it's not. It's a uh, perpetual aggression. Perpetual aggression. That's why you yeah. run corn. You charge. Yeah, Every time you get a kill, you make a three inch charge uh, towards the nearest target. Uh, and so if you have fight twice, you're charging, killing, charging yeah. again, killing, get another three inch consolidation. That's why you take it. It's good. I don't. Is it making this list, guys? What do you think? No, Zinch is, yeah, definitely I reckon the next one. And yeah. that's obviously uh, for each operative making a shooting attack in the roll, attack step of your shooting attack, retain one of your attack results of a five plus that is successful as a critical. Yeah, so pairs really nicely with a heavy bolter, which is P1. Mm. So you can almost guarantee that you're going to get an AP1 heavy bolter. That's really nice. Um, but you're, the reason, the number one reason you're taking this is number one, you get a four up invuln for, for a CP yeah, that's or nice. free. But also yeah. the main thing, in my opinion, the, the one reason you take Zinch is for the for the one tactical ploy where it gives you plus one APL. Yeah, plus one so, APL. So your bail fire on on maybe into the dark is move dash open door blast and you win the game. Yeah. Like that is undeniably strong. But there's some real good situations where you could use it. Any into oh, yeah. uh, a teams with a lot of heavy weapons, not heavy weapons, but special weapons. Mm. Um, yeah, having the four up in Vun. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. that's great, isn't it? It's good, but it's also the thing about it is that it's very thematic. It's very swingy, right? It's mm, sometimes you're gonna make those coin flips. Yeah. yeah sometimes Zinch, the the deceiver of deceiver of ways, is just going to leave you <laughs> high and dry. Yeah, and, and Zinch is so incredibly good against a few matchups, like yes, like yeah. what you were saying, Russ. Like against those heavy mm. AP teams, those heavy shooting teams. Like man, it is so incredibly good. But where it loses its value is against way more matchups that, spoiler, Nurgle will net you more value on. But mm-hmm. both are good. Yeah. Like The fun thing about all these marks is that they are all situational and they are all y- cases where you can use them and get a lot of value out of them. So, mm. so Zinch, yeah. good, but not on this list, baby. Not today. Not no. today, Zerg. I wouldn't say for it's an all-comers. Uh, that brings us to Slanesh, I think, yes. coming in second. Ooh. I Getting love fleet. Slanesh. Getting fleet. I mean, we've touched upon it. Like I like having touched. Uh, I like having sometimes anointed and Slanesh um, and Ooh. the Shrive Talon as as um, Slanesh because you get a plus to their movements. So you're more likely to get them in combat, and I like to do that. And then giving them um, Graceful Killer for that plus one to the um, damage. You know, it's not massive. They're both five damage, so there would only be six. But it's if someone's taken a little bit of blast damage. So if you've managed to get a blast off and there's been a couple of spillover splash wounds, Mm. so you've got like splash on a couple of things. So if you, yeah, if you blast early and you get a vet guard team down to five or six wounds, I mean, it depends, but it is, I mean, if you get, yeah, basically, can't hold it in. But I mean, yeah, running in there, sometimes that's useful can be nice yeah. and you can get that hole yeah. if they are injured you can strike twice but that's only really useful if it's just a higher wound uh, yeah. model because obviously you're killing and, most things that are wounded has seven wounds and, anyway and for those who don't know the the fleet buff you were talking about the passive buff for slanesh yeah is plus one movement mm. so it's really good, good save. like in- intercessors their plus one movement was nerfed to not apply to charge ranges 
not to Slanesh. Slanesh not to still Slanesh, has, baby. Yeah. So that, that's yeah. a that's a nine inch charge plus one inch for um, engagement range. Real good. Mm-hmm. So Slanesh, I think, like corn, is an awesome tech piece to sort of supplement. Like a little a nice accoutrement with your main mark of either Zinch or Nurgle. And uh, but this brings us home. This brings us home to sweet uh, Papa Delicious Nurgle, Nurgle to his his loving, embracing arms. Papa <laughs> Nurgle here to give us all a warm, big hug. And his blessing is we touched on it earlier. Uh, I, 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 I don't want to get this wrong. So somebody else read it word for word. So don't let me mess it up. Reese, Reese's rules. A shooting attack is made against the operative. In the roll defense step of the shooting attack, you can retain one normal save as a critical. Mm, so Insane. tasty. Yes. Yeah, like good. we already said, if you're behind cover, which you probably, like, if if you have, if you can, you'll always be behind cover when you're getting shot. Yeah. And so you just auto-retain a crit. And their ploys, just mind-numbingly good. Yeah, just strategic so good. ploys. For an elite team, with, the best. Oh, so, so here's here's some more philosophy to help you out, legionaries. Legionaries are already killy enough, people. They are, are so mm-hmm. killy right out of the box. What do they need help with? They need help staying alive, like my my good friend the Bee Gees know all about. You get the um, uh, what what is the flesh the flesh one called? Talk uh, about the strategic mutagenic flesh. M- mutagenic. Yeah. mutagenic flesh. So you're minusing all damage, regular damage to a minimum mm-hmm. of three. Right. So it used to be just to a, a minimum of two. Minimum now two. it's a minimum of three, which is not quite as good. It hurts against intercessors and bolters, but it, a, it does yeah, help it you. It was a nerf. Yeah, it was it was a heavy nerf. Um, but now, like th- think of all the base four damage melee weapons out there. Mm. Commandos, chain swords, uh, power weapons, all these things yeah. that have a, a four base damage. Well, now those to you, if you have this ploy up and you will ha- you will have it and up. You will. Make no mistake. You will have it up. Uh, it is minus one damage. So they're so killy out of the box. So you have Nurgle, which pres- provides, keeps you safe, right? More defensive capabilities. Zinch with defensive capabilities. What They do it in different ways. Zinch is more swingier. You're hoping for those crits. You're hoping for those four ups to, to keep yourself alive. Nurgle yeah. is, again, very thematic, always present, very reliable. You're behind cover. Here's your crit. No matter what's coming in, you're minusing to a minimum of three. And the other one is, uh, what, what's the other one? Implacable, which Implacable. is insanely good. Take it away, somebody. It's so good. Yeah, Russ, I mean, you take this one. It's so good. So, like, basically, you're not treated for the entire turn. All your Nurgle agent, uh, agents, operatives, are not treated as being injured. They ignore all negative modifiers to APL, just in case that's happened. You ignore the worsening, and this is the key for an elite team mm. that's potentially shooting into an elite uh, a horde team. You ignore the worsening of your ballistic skill when performing an Overwatch. I mean, oh, it just it's just so reliable. Your Overwatch. Yeah. It's just so good because if you're against a team that's maybe thought like I'll wait until he's he's moved out his big guns and then I can move in. It's like, well, there's going to be some some overwatch and it's going to come in at my full ballistic skill. It's going to be three ups. It's going to be as bad as it was last time. Like if they've got a lot of models to move and you can get your plasma gunner in if you if that's your last move and you can get your plasma gunner within line of sight of two operatives and they don't move that other one. You're killing two operatives with that yep. Overwatch as well, and it's just sort of like if you play that well, that is that is. So, but in later turn, I think there's not a turn you potentially don't drop implacable because mm-hmm. turn one, if you want to get two shooting, maybe not the first turn, but I would be always running at two, three, and four. Maybe not four, depending 100%. on if you need to save it. But like you've got people that would be injured, not anymore. You don't have to worry yeah. about it. There's if you've got anyone that's got like. Like stun, it doesn't happen a lot, but if someone stunned you for some reason, don't mm-hmm. worry about it. But it's mainly not to be injured, so you get your full movement and ballistic skill because you've down to maybe two or three operatives, turn three or four, they're still getting yeah. their Overwatch shots and they're still at three. Yeah. So, yeah, just good. And g- let, let's, let me take you on a journey. It, you, oh, you're you're playing hey, it's Legionaries versus versus Blood. I feel like it's like a yeah, it's, yeah, a, it's, a, a raft on a journey. canoe. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's turn. It's turning point four. It's this is this is neck and neck. It, you've been taking losses. They've been taking losses. You have two operatives on the board. One has say your champ has four wounds left. Your balefire acolyte has has five wounds left. They both would Rough. be wounded, right? Yeah. But now when you need them 
to dash, zip all the way across the board, full full uh, full speed ahead with Implacable, they can still do it. You need them to that plasma pistol to be hitting on twos. Guess what? It still does, mm. even after all this time. Still still working like it used to, right? So it's just so incredibly good and reliable that it it is the best overall. And experiment with all the different marks and play what is fun ultimately. But for this take all comers list, Nurgle is best overall. And yeah. uh, and also we got to talk about their tactical ploy because each mark has a tactical ploy. Uh, so, so I want to Reese, would you like to cover the tactical ploy? Yeah, for I'll Nurgle? Just quickly before we move one. on, the one thing I was going to say, Russ, just to touch on your point as well about mutagenic flesh and implacable. Obviously, the leader ability and even the the um, icon as well. Just that little synergy with the favorite of the dark gods being able to get one of mm. those a turn for free. Pretty yeah, much. Just drop the mutagenic flesh for free. Yeah, you can run both of the Nurgle things every turn of the entire game and it's costing you one CP special. a turn. That's what know, I do. Which, yep. is, which is ludicrous to, for, to have that extra efficiency yeah. on, a, on an elite team. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, yeah, so the, the tactical ploys, Ben, you were saying for Nurgle, um, Malignant Aura is what we're talking Ooh, about baby, here. baby. And this Stop dirty to me, Russ. Reese, stop dirty to me. <laughs> well, for Nurgle. Um, look, this is another one of those ones. I think um, at first glance, when you read it, you go, "Oh, is that how good is that? Is that going to make a big difference?" But using that tactical ploy during a friendly Nurgle operative's activation until the end of the turning point, while an enemy operative is within square of that operative, subtract one from the defense characteristic of that enemy operative, aka. Any AP two weapons equals now just eat it. It's so good. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It's there is the no AP three in the game. The, the no. AP three does not exist in Kill Team yes. outside of Nurgle Legionaries. Let's go on another journey. Please. You're experimenting with Melta, like like Russ has told you oh, about. You're experimenting yeah. with Melta, like oh this Melta feels good. You got to be close with the Melta anyways. You got to be within six. Yeah. What more is Why three not get more inches? Three? A simple dash. You're within three inches. Who are you shooting? Maybe, maybe it is. Uh, let's say it's an intercessor captain or sergeant, yeah, right? Yeah. He so AP two. Boom! You pop this ploy. AP three. All the hits you roll go straight through. They do all the. They, there's nothing they can save against. Now yeah. imagine you're you're shooting Captain Justian. What does he have? A four up invuln. Guess what? Three dice? No. Nay. Now he is rolling only two dice because it also applies to invulns. So Mm -hmm. Zinch Marines that thought they were safe, not so safe anymore. So like it's just it is an insta delete. What do you need to kill? What do you need to delete? Now you can make it happen with such reliability, which is what Nurgle is so good. It nets you reliability, which in my opinion with an elite team, you just have to have. It's definitely that thing, isn't it? It's the yeah. the efficiency that this adds into a team that is built on the fact that it needs to be efficient. It just makes everything work that much better. And, and that's for me, that was one that I definitely slept on. I, you looked at it and you're like, oh, geez, that's pretty close. To being that close, is that going to come up that much? But, yeah, you've got a plasma pistol. You've got, yeah, you take a melter gun, you know, and because you, you've got the ability, you've got three APL to be able to move, dash. There's no reason you may as well not go that little bit further or use it to take a big character off an, obje- uh, an objective, heaps of damage on hulks, you know, the ability just to, yep. yeah, really put out the hurt um, is is you. Very unusual to see teams that have tactical and strategic ploys too, and they're all useful. Um, like so often yeah. teams will have yeah. two or three that- I are, use all of the Nurgle ones. That's it. They're hugely yep. situational or they're you might use it yeah. once a game. All three of these- you are definitely going to use a lot. You yeah. know, some you'll use multiple every times. Turn. It's it's crazy. Yeah. And malignant aura. A little thing that people don't don't catch all the time is that I believe I could have been playing this wrong the whole time, but it lasts till the end of the turn. So whatever operatives this guy is next to, it's not for that just just that mm-hmm. shooting attack. You Am I correct? correct? So let's say end of the turning point, point. He's part. Let's let's say on some crazy town level, this guy lived right, yeah. or there's another guy within three inches. Your plasma gunner shooting across the board is still going to have the same benefit. It's yeah. just, man, it's just real good. It's just real good. I'd probably say the hit, things, the, hit the high spots. Yeah, I'd, let's say I have hit the high spots. I know um, we touched on it early, and I agree. One of my favorites, the plasma gunner taking the malefic blade 
Um, yeah. Which is the close combat weapon, five attacks, uh, hitting on threes, three, five damage, turns a gunner operative into a, a take all comers uh, kind of operative, you know, really mm. putting out the hurt. I, I think that's my only consistent equipment. I always take the Malefic Blade with my specialist gunner, just because I, I like that run. I play around with the other ones, so sometimes I'll give Shrive Talon aggression simulants just so that he can get at least one reroll to make him more. And then sometimes the Grizzly Trophies, and then sometimes Anointed get Grizzly Trophies. Like, I, I play around with the others, whereas Malefic Blade, I do tend to just be like, boom, Gunner's got a Malefic Gunner, Blade yeah. just because it's it's the only thing that he's weak at, and that makes him strong at that. And that's sort yeah. of... Yeah, it's only my, that's yeah. my only boom, guaranteed. Yeah, that's, that's, that, that rules. I think, yeah, so for me, like, the auto-take always, I've never played a game without it. I never will. The trophy, which is minus one attack in a, in a three-inch bubble, is just so, because it applies to shooting and melee. So yeah, the, the two operatives that I think mm -hmm. people like it on are either the, the leader, which is a fair shout, or the anointed. I like it on the yeah. anointed. Because, mm -hmm. again, it's just it's so good. And it's also great because if people want to come up and shoot you like to break your conceal cover or something, well, now they're minus one attack to do that because they have to get within that three inches. Um, and uh, so it just it, it rules. So I think that on your your anointed or your or your leader is great. I agree. I actually my, my take all comers like in this list, what I would do 99 percent of the time is I'd go knife on the gunner, mm -hmm. knife on mm -hmm. the heavy suspenser on the heavy yeah. and trophy on on the anointed that would be ben's take yeah. all because man i tell you what a knife on the heavy gunner again it's late game he's been hanging back the mid board is now cluttered what do you do you charge him with your heavy gunner nobody like, expects it like what five attacks three yeah. five what and you're like yeah that's right baby mm. he's got yeah. the knife and i think yeah. you yeah, have so to good. take the suspense system up, yeah. in an elite team as well because if you're taking a heavy gunner totally and them, mm. and we've probably seen a bit with the Justin Justin in team at the moment, or Justin team, who whatever we call them. Um, that that's probably the one thing that they struggle with. They they've got heavy guys that can't move, and yeah. in an elite team, that's just so debilitating. Um, yeah, death so, sentence. Yeah. yeah, it is. It really is because it's just an operative that's be, yeah. not doing much, uh, or either not shooting or doing mission actions. And it's basically a two APL operative at, at that point. So that's yeah, the malefic blade times two. Um, you've got the grizzly. That, that's trophy. what I like. Yeah, that's what that's what I like. Is there anything um open to the, the you know the malign scripture, the ability to use? We're sort of touching on the the guy using two psychic powers. Is there any play in that? Do you reckon? So you can not buff for me. And shoot, but yeah. not yeah. really. I think you generally yeah. need the move and the dash to get into a position. Or if you, you've got to remember, you've, totally. you at some point have to play the mission uh, and you've not got loads of operatives. So he might have to move onto an objective and then do something like bop it, loot, and then like, so you're probably not, there's not going to be loads of scenarios where you need two powers. Yep. Um, I don't personally take it just for that reason. I, because there's yeah. only six operatives, someone's going to die early and you're going to left with Too four precious. operatives having to having to claim a whole bunch of and it's only going to come up maybe a couple of times whereas something like as ben mentioned grizzled grizzly trophies will keep an anointed alive mm. a lot longer with plus that plus the five of feel no pain so you're getting less attack anyway and met less i just know i think i feels like yeah you take that yeah. over malign scriptures it is more expensive yeah. but yeah. yeah i got one you never take Warded armor. I was Leave it at home. Never take it. I've, take, I've taken it before. <laughs> I have oh, really? taken it before. Yeah, I, do, I, I like to try them all out. Uh, so I, I have uh, I have run every single uh, equipment with these oh, guys. Man. You know what? You know what happens with warded armor. You forget he's got it. Yeah, and you roll your three up <laughs> saves, and then and then you're like, oh wait, oh no, he had warded armor, and you're like. But he's taking wounds now anyway. Oh, smart. Anyway, and yeah. that's what happens with water armor. You need to really remember you've got it. Yeah. I, think, I wouldn't um, leave it. Yeah. I, I love, I've Basically. always been a fan of those kind of rules where it is like that, like the, the bit of a gamble. I know that in the like 40K, Drakari have it too. They've got like one of their dudes got a two up in Val until he fails it. And then like, and it can be the best mm. or the worst investment ever because it can be just that first yeah. rot. Like I do love the the, the chaos of it. Obviously, tainted rounds is obviously very interesting. Um, if you were going mm. that that bolter heavy list, we did talk yeah. about. I've used it before. Yeah, taking your bolt. Yeah, great, great on an icon bolter. Guns. Yep, exactly. Mm. Ben on your icon. Yeah. 
there's definitely use for it, but it's still it's three three equipment points, which is not is not cheap. Yeah, for, I mean, yeah. four five is nice, but yeah, I can understand taking it. Four five damage, really reliable. If you're taking the double shoot, so you take your icon bearer with undivided yeah. double shoot. I, I just thought of something that's real stupid, but sounds so much fun. I think I might try it. It's, it's objectively dumb, Go but you're anointed with how, how many equipment points is warded armor? Uh, it is three, three, three. Oh, three. Dear, three. So you stack warded armor. That's three. Uh-huh. You stack the trophy <laughs> for six. And then you stack gonna the- He's going to two of save. Yeah, the aggression stimulant. So now he's getting- He, he doesn't need this, it. But now, but now you can reroll the twos. Uh, like, it's just this crazy- You put all of your equipment yeah, points on, on the anointed yeah. and just send them up. It's dumb. It's bad. <laughs> don't do it. But it sounds I'm really fun. that. You know what? Russ said he's I tried, try tried most things once. He's I think I might try. try it next time. Yeah. I'm going to try this crazy stack. Nine, nine equipment points sunk into you anointed. I love it. I'm going I'm to try it. I'm going to try it out. Yeah, um, man. What are the strong and the weak matchups for Legionaries, though? So who mm. are they? I'm, I know overall they're, quite, they're one of the good teams because they are good at most things. They're good against most teams. But who are they not wanting to see on the other side of the table? I got some off the top. Yeah, I was, I was, I was going to say, Kasserkin, <laughs> Blooded, straight off two, the of, two of the worst yeah. matchups, Kasserkin, Blooded, so many yeah. pieces that can trade. It hurts mm, so bad. Yeah. Um, I also think it's it's weird, like Corsairs, also a bad matchup because everybody has a power sword and you're dead in two lethal five crits. Um, mm. Like that, that's a rough one as well. And they can match you for uh, in a lot of ways, the Star too. Storm Duelist is is going to delete a model as well with that fusion pistol. Yeah, yeah. Anything that has pieces that can trade with you that has more operatives, um, it, it is going to yeah. be a rough time. So yeah, like Casterkin, Blooded, Corsairs are going to be rough ones. On the good side, great matchup into Intercession. Not as good as it used to be with with the yeah. change yeah. to the the damage mitigation, but that's a good matchup. And there's good, those are going to be everywhere. Commandos, famously, Commandos' worst matchup, probably lead, uh, Nurgle Legionaries. Um, that is the common you know, sort of consensus. Uh, and they're the big bads right now. Mm, so all of yeah. the big bad teams, they have good matchups into. But their bad matchups are kind of like, in, in, you know, in like the, the C-tier range. It's kind yeah, of funny. you're not seeing them um, top tabling very often. So therefore, I guess on the competitive side, they're not probably not going to be yeah. matching up against them as much. I wonder how he'd fancy the chances into cults. I feel One like of the better strong matchups, against that. Yeah, I feel like yeah. that would be a good a good cults match. Yeah, Bill fire and fights. missile launcher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I was going to say two flanks. You're yeah. going to be able to get access to one. Two, yeah. yeah. I think that's but that's one of Colt's biggest issues too is the ability to be able to deploy yeah. and not have deployments so hard. I hate. Well, yep. there we go. I think that's a pretty. You know what, guys? I'm proud of us. That was a pretty good, uh, comprehensive wrap. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see how we hey, go with. We this. stumbled through it. Thanks for watching. The full pod is available where you listen to your podcast. We stream live on Twitch at Casual Wargamers, and the full video podcast is available now to all tiers of our Patreon. See you next week.